instantly detonates the shell charges, followed 25 milliseconds later by the leg charges. It's a complicated web to make work, and they only have one chance to get it right. I want to keep the clips just right in here okay. on the inside of column. I don't want them in the middle. I don't want them out too far because that curtain might whip on it. Mark has three steps to complete the wiring of the tower for the implosion. First, he wraps the base of the tower with what he calls the trunk line, using the orange non-electric cord. And as a backup, Mark returns the line back on itself. And for redundancy on redundancy, jumper lines are tied between them. Second connection. Mark's team clips the leg charges to this main trunk line. These yellow lines are connected to the fuses that will delay the leg implosion. The third and final connection is the horizontal slot to the main trunk line. I have enough cord. Stacy sends two lines from each side of the slot to the base of the tower. The entire blowdown depends on these few lines working. She checks every inch of cord. Right, so this is a perfect example of what I'm worried about when we're dropping these down lines. Right here, you just have a little point where the cord has to come in contact with the concrete. If the wind were to get kicking up and this started rubbing, this would wear through this very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do is just put some tape here to kind of pad it a bit, give it a little protection. She does her best to protect every inch, but there are things out of her control. The odds are extraordinarily slim 